Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial playthrough. Uh, well, right off the bat, let's talk about the last few episodes. Uh, and by few, I mean six or seven. Uh, went a little crazy with uh, being frustrated by things. And uh, just a little bit uh, aggressively negative over the last, you know, so many episodes. Which I think has really ruined this content because it was supposed to be tutorial stuff. So let's talk about tutorial stuff. What do we have left to talk about that we have not already talked about? Now, there are always things, right? Cataclysm is a game of nuance. So there's lots of stuff that can be talked about that's like minor optimization, but they're not really suitable for like a full episode. So unfortunately, those tidbits are things that are just going to come as we play. And really, there aren't that many left to discuss. There's always going to be you know, something you can talk a little bit more in detail about, but the only major thing left that I would like to talk about are faction camps, and we're not ready for that yet. Now, we could just literally set one up right here, but that's not fun. What I want to do, as we've discussed, is to move, oh, the map screen's still broken, is to move to a, a nearby city and kind of build our own little encampment. I would like to do that because I think that would be a fun distraction from kind of the, the, the same stuff that I do in every playthrough. I thought it would be a, a different thing to do. So we're definitely going to talk about it at some point. I don't know how expansive the tutorial about faction camps will be because I have no experience. So we'll have to learn as we go. But that's really the only thing left that's like a major point of discussion that we haven't even touched on. If you have other suggestions, please, for the love of God, let me know in the comments down below. If you think uh, there's a particular topic that would like fit a full episode, because I honestly, I just can't think of anything. I was going to do an episode on boats. Um, like, for instance, I was going to talk about making this uh, float, but really, it turns out it's very easy. There is a, uh, does it say, it should say floats somewhere, or maybe that only shows up once you put something on it. Uh, basically, all you would do is install boat hulls, which we should be able to make by now, uh, on your vehicle, and they can fit pretty much anywhere. They don't really conflict with very many um, other items, so they're pretty easy to put on your vehicle all over the place. And once that happens, you'll get a line here somewhere that says floats and it will say yes or no or something like that. Um, it's a very binary thing. It either will float or it won't. And that's that's like literally it. So I was like, man, I can't make a whole episode on boats when all you really do is put boat holes on it. And that's that's it. Um, obviously, if you were making a rowboat, you would also install oars. But that's also not really something super complicated that needs to be talked about. So, just wasn't, no, I don't really know what to talk about at this point. Um, don't really know what to talk about. We can install our autoclave. Why don't we do that? Go ahead and grab the autoclave. We can talk about that a little bit. Autoclave, it's a huge thing. Again, we have to uh, carry it in our hands because it's so large. Oh, I'm a little congested. I had uh, some chicken for dinner, some grilled chicken with hot sauce. Door shutter, yeah, so... Uh, apparently, this is occurring anytime you uh, initially walk on a mountable vehicle tile or furniture tile. It just says it's in valid terrain, which is not correct. I said previously that someone may have uh, changed the IDs for certain items. From my understanding, that's not what it is. It's actually just... Uh, it was the rear passenger seat where I took that out. Can't put the autoclave... One mount. Oh, that's right. We have to craft the mountable autoclave first. That's going to require our spare parts, which are inside here. Autoclave. Oh, that's right. We don't have solder, which we had a whole discussion about because I was irritated by it. Give me the game thing. We'll butcher these for solder. Go ahead and drop those. Butcher. Uh, yes, disassemble takes an hour. Ten solder. And we'll do both because it'll give us... Of course, the sun's going to go down. Oh, no, the sun is coming up. Excellent. Good, that means we have time. Some of the disassembly numbers could use some work. I don't know that it would take me an hour. Uh, and I'm pretty inexperienced uh, to, to harvest electronics from a game, whatever. Um, but I guess I don't know the inner workings of a Game Boy, so maybe it is more complicated. But a lot of times you'll find that disassembling items take a kind of disproportionate amount of time. 
uh, like way more time than you would anticipate it to take. So we should have solder now. So we'll go autoclave, make the mountable autoclave. This will take some time. We don't have a table here. This is one of those things that because it takes so long, it might have been, it, it would have been more valuable to do it next to a table to get that increased crafting time. I think uh, crafting without any table or anything is 85% speed. I think uh, I actually have that in my notepad. Let me take a look at that. Here's my miscellaneous use notepad, which I make notes in occasionally. Um, and I've zoomed it way in because there's a lot of like personal stuff around it. So try to ignore that, uh, this, you know, the fact that this is enormous. Uh, but basically a workbench is 120% speed. Desks and tables are 110. Foldable table 105. Inadequate table tarps, etc. is 85. And then the ground and non-helpful furniture would be 70. So I thought there was a separate setting for your hands, like holding things. But I guess it probably defaults to using the ground. So it's actually 70% which is not great. So we definitely should have used the table, but uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so sorry about the size of that and whatnot. That is from someone on the Discord. I believe last time I posted it, someone said it came from soup. So just wanna give credit where it's due. We'll go ahead and install the autoclave. Now the autoclave will take up a space in the vehicle and it will block movement. So that is one of the reasons why we put it where we put it is that we still have space to walk down the, the, the aisle. We can't mount this. I can't walk into it uh, or anything like that. And now we have the autoclave. So how does the autoclave work? Well, first, we're deaf. I don't want to be deaf. Let's take off our... We're still deaf. Wearing earphones? No, I'm not. See, we had this issue before. I think what is happening is that if it runs out of battery as well while it's on it counts it as still functioning so let's toggle this maybe it'll go away nope we're still deaf so that may be although i can hear the game sounds whereas if i'm deaf no i can still hear them huh let's wear the headgear now i can't hear them i don't know why we're still getting the the earbuds thing, it's definitely an annoyance uh, and it makes me worried that we might not hear something important, but for the most part, it should probably be okay. Anyway, we have an autoclave and I did link to a video previously about how to clean and take care of CBMs. We'll just cover that briefly now. So let's grab a filthy CBM. Here we have, you know, I like the flashlight. We'll get that set up. And uh, we don't really need to clean these other two. We already have an internal chronometer. We already have a clean torsion ratchet. So there's no real reason for us to clean this other one. We can sell them. These are a good um, product to sell because they have good prices. If we look, barter value 10. Oh, maybe that has changed. Uh, people told me that CBMs are one of the best ways to uh, make money for trading. Yeah, it looks like the barter value of these has been significantly lowered. Uh so I guess that's not true anymore. Anyway, we'll take the cranial flashlight because we don't have one yet and we would like it to be clean. So step one is to clean the CBM. Okay, so, so right now, currently this is faulty and it's filthy. And there are three steps that we need to do. We need to repair the faultiness. We need to remove the filthy tag by cleaning it with a sponge or washcloth, something that can clean away the big debris. And then we need to sterilize it to give it the sterile, sterile tag so that it can be ready to install. So if we look here, you'll see this has a sterile tag. It's not just that it's not filthy, it's actually fully sterile, which is important. So first step, clean off the CBM. So we're gonna go to our tools pile. We should have picked up a sponge around here somewhere. If you can't make a sponge, you can make a wash kit, uh, washing kit, uh, which is, uh, oh, it requires a sponge. No, you can use a rag for it. Similarly, you can make something component rag. Now that's going to give us too much stuff. There was an item added that is just a rag. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I thought it was called a washcloth, but I don't see it. Anyway, you can make a wash kit. Very straightforward. You can make a wash board as well just from a plank. So that's not a difficult component. Um, and it's just a little kit to, that you can use to wash things. Uh, we do have a sponge, so we don't need to do that. We're going to need some cleanser. I'm not sure where the cleanser goes. Usually I put it on my tool pile. 
but with the auto sorting tools i'm not sure where it puts things did we make a chemical pile it would be on chemical pile detergent it's not a chemical soap yeah we have a jillion soap so we can use soap instead uh if you don't it's either detergent or soap no don't pick up 500 soap uh sponge cleanser filthy item that should be it so we'll head out to a water pool um, you can use water in your base if you want. Why is there blood on this? Oh, there's not. It's just strawberries. Yeah, they look like they had blood on them. Okay. Uh, but let's head out to a water pool. This way we're not using the water in our base. We will activate the sponge. And you'll see when we activate it, it says wash hard items. So there is a differentiation between hard and soft items in the game. So clothing are soft items. You would use a washboard to, to clear um, soft clothing or for hard items, you would use a sponge. Now there's additionally, there are washing machines and dishwashers in the game. Dishwashers will wash hard items and washing machines will wash soft items. And I believe the wash kit that we were talking about a moment ago can, can do both um, because it contains the washboard and a sponge or rag or whatever. So that's something you can take care of. So we're gonna wash hard items You'll see it gives us a list. The way this works is that we toggle what we want to wash. If we had multiple things, we could toggle which ones we want to wash. And uh, it'll pop up on this list of things to clean. It will also tell us what we need. It says three cleansers, so our detergent or soap. So we use three soap bars of 20. And water, we have an infinite amount because it's a puddle, but we use 20. So washing items does take up an enormous amount of water. So a lot of times what I find when I'm in the early game and I want to wash something usually there's enough water in one toilet to wash like one item but if you're trying to wash something large say you find a military rucksack it's usually not enough for one toilet to have enough water so it can be a little difficult to gather that water into one place when you don't really have a 60 liter tank or something massive that you can use for that purpose so we're going to just hit enter here and it will wash that you washed your items pops up in the log and we now have a faulty cranial CBM. It's color-coded green because it's no longer filthy, but it's still not sterile. So let's head back to base. And yes, I alternate between saying sterile and sterile. Just depends on what the sentence is. So now we have an object that is faulty, but is otherwise clean. So let's activate the item, or not activate, we'll go into our inventory and select the item and go into this menu and we have an option here called mend and mend allows you to fix faults. So you see this says that it's been already deployed and the bionic needs to be reset to its factory state. That is essentially what faulty means is that it was previously deployed in another human being and it needs to be repackaged for the auto dock to make, in, you know, the auto dock is not expecting a mangled CBM that's already been deployed. It's expecting a full factory set piece of material to install, right? It's a difference between like, I mean, it's a robot. It doesn't understand much. It only understands what it's programmed to do. And it's only of course programmed to use sterile, real CBMs right from the factory. So we mend this. Mending requires a couple things. Primarily it requires screw driving and bolt turning, uh, which is, you know, depending on your stage of the game should be very easy to have by the time you're working on CBMs. But if it's early game, it can be a little bit difficult. Also requires a slew of skills, electronics, first aid, and mechanics in order to do this. We have all those, so we'll just hit enter and reset to factory state. This will take like 40 minutes or something. I, I didn't even look at what the time consumption would be. We'll do that. You successfully reset the cranial flashlight CBM to its factory state. If we now go into our inventory, um, it just says cranial flashlight. It no longer says, hey, this has been deployed and needs to be mended. So now that we have that secure, we will pick up a, what is it, uh, autoclave pouch. We'll pick up one. You'll see we have 50. We're never going to use all 50. This is what I was talking about previously where if you find one stack, you're usually set for good. They spawn in stacks of 25. We found two stacks. We're probably good for the rest of the game. This is really unlikely we would ever need to wash 50 CBMs. So pretty, pretty good. Or sterilize rather, not wash. So it's no longer filthy, it's no longer mm, in faulty, but it still needs to be sterilized. And we do this by activating, oh, first of all, there's been some bugs lately when using autoclave pouches. So there is a chance that when I do this, it will disappear from the game. That's a bug that's obviously not intended. 
Um, and if that happens, we'll just respawn an item into the game so we don't have to deal with it uh, because that would be unfair to, to have to go through that. Um, so what we do is activate the... Uh, we have it in our inventory, don't we? The autoclave pouch. And it will say pack CBM in pouch. And what we will do is package... You can't package... Uh, it's showing them up. I guess you could package them as faulty filthy cbms but that would be a waste of a pouch so don't do that um what we want is the cranial flashlight cbm and we will package that we use the one on our person you say you carefully prepare the cbm for sterilization basically what this means is that we placed it in this pouch again these pouches are not um i don't know if we ever talked about them they're not regular pouches they're not just standard plastic bags or anything like that these are specifically made for withstanding the heat and chemicals and water from the autoclave uh, steam all that stuff that would damage electronics they're specifically built to withstand that while allowing them to be sterilized right if, if we when this change came people were saying hey why can't we make our own autoclave pouches it's not as simple as throwing something in a plastic bag because this thing is going to get very very hot and it's going to have a lot of moisture and, uh, to my understanding, some amount of chemicals in it, um, which are not good for just a generic plastic bag, would not be able to withstand that. So if we check our inventory, looks like it successfully packed that CBM and we didn't lose it, which is good news. And we're now prepared to sterilize this. So we do this by walking to the autoclave and dropping the cranial flashlight onto the autoclave. And you'll see... You put the cranial flashlight into the Humvee's autoclave. Now, if we look at the autoclave uh, using the X menu, this is a great way, by the way, if you don't know how much storage is left on an item in your vehicle, uh, really the only way to do that, like I think if we examine, no, if we, there's another way to do this. If we use the advanced inventory menu, it will show us and we go to the cargo space, it'll say how much literage. But a lot of times that's a little bit annoying. So we just hit the examine button, the, the lowercase X for the look menu uh, and we go to that item and it will display up here how much storage is currently occupied so if I do this again you'll see 20 of 162 liters 0 of 250 etc so we can look at the autoclave one of my only gripes about the autoclave system is that the autoclave can actually only accommodate one CBM at a time so you can only wash or sterilize one CBM at any given moment so we dropped our CBM in there. That CBM has a two and a half liter volume. Um, so it takes up the entirety essentially of the, the autoclave. So you can only wash one at a time and it does take a few hours. So once we have placed the item in the autoclave, there are a couple things you're gonna wanna make sure you have. Number one is a tank of water. Um, previously, it required a tank of water. Someone told me recently that if you have water in your inventory, you can just use that. I'm not sure how much water it uses, but apparently you can just bring a jug from like a lake or something if that's what you want, um, it, assuming that person is correct, which I have no reason to doubt them. Um, second, it's going to consume an enormous amount of power. So looking at our current batteries, this is not going to be enough, I don't think. If I remember, you know what, I don't want to say what I think the amount is because I it's been a long time since I actually referenced the specific number. But to my understanding uh, and my thinking, this will not be nearly enough power. So unfortunately, we're going to drain our batteries basically to empty and we're going to have to refill them as we go. Uh, one way we can circumvent some of this is by turning on the engine, which will bring in a lot of power. Now, I imagine currently we're getting plus 1100. I got to imagine the autoclave will actually still draw more power than that. Anyway, once we've established this, we will examine the uh, autoclave using the lowercase e menu. You'll see it takes 1.5 hours to activate the autoclave. I believe if you don't have water for this, it will prompt you and say, hey, you don't have enough water for this. Uh, but we will just go ahead and hit activate the autoclave. And we get a message that says you turn the autoclave on and it starts its cycle. So if we now examine it again... Oh, do we not examine it? I thought it said, uh, I thought there was a button that let you see how much time was left. Uh, I thought when you examined it, it told you how much time was left. I guess not. Uh, used to, I thought. Anyway, let's take a look at our power. Yeah, we're actually losing 368 
even though we're running our engine. So this is something that is going to deplete our batteries. Now, if we do the math, we can figure out if this is going to deplete our batteries or not. And it sure looks like it's going to within an hour and a half, but we'll let it running and we'll see how that shakes out. Let's come inside and eat something, drink something. I think we're going to be moving on soon, regardless of whether we can take the food with us or not. All that red sauce rotted. Um, because at this point, there's just no reason for us to be here. Uh, again, we did plant food. Are we overweight? We are. So we'll just eat some pumpkin. We did plant seeds here. Oh, it closes the menu still. I thought they fixed that. Uh, so now we have to do these one at a time and it will close the menu in between, which is how it used to be, but it's one of those quality of life things you get used to. And then when it's gone, you're like, man, do I miss that <laughs> quality of life change. Uh, what do we want to drink here? Do we have any... Oh, consume time. I don't remember this being here. Uh, so that's something we can talk about in the next step. Well, we can talk about it now. So basically, previously in Cataclysm, when you would consume something, uh, it would be essentially instant. The moment you press the button, it was consumed into your body. I, it probably does take like one turn to eat something. Um, but one thing that they wanted to do is, is set up variable times for consuming items. And uh, that's that's what I'm looking at. So eating different items require different time uh, investments. So if we were to drink this energy cola, it will take us 16 seconds. What I got to assume, I haven't seen any PRs or anything. I got to assume this is related to the container that they're in. So energy cola taking 16 seconds probably involves you popping the can open as well. And maybe that's why it takes longer because some of this stuff... Like, we're seeing patterns there. Like, anything in bottom bottles seems to be about 16 seconds. The things that are in jars seem to be less. And then the gallon jugs seem to be one second. Uh, oh, no, it is, uh, it is 16 seconds. So, I'm guessing it's based on container as well. But I have no proof of that. So, take that for what you will. Um, but that's interesting. I didn't notice that change in the logs or anything. So, that's cool. Let's check cans and stuff. Well, we don't have any closed cans. Pickled veggie would be in a jar. So opening the jar, I guess, would take significant time. Although these blackberries are just loose blackberries, right? Why would they take 50 seconds? I guess I don't know. Fast noodles. Takes a minute and 40 seconds. It might just be set in the food. It might have nothing to do with containers. And I was just wrong. I will look, I'll look into that. Um... Obviously, when we do our experimental cataclysm and that's in the change log, we'll talk about it. Um, but that's the gist of that. They wanted to add variable times to food consumption, which makes sense uh, and things like that. I don't know if these batteries are going to hold out or not. Let's wait like uh, 30 minutes. My guess is that they will be empty. It should take 76 minutes to finish sterilizing items in the Humvee. Yeah, so... Uh, there it is giving us pop-ups about the uh, the remaining time of the autoclave. I could swear that you could examine it and find out how much time is left, but it looks like it just prints messages in the log. So there we got a few messages as it progressed. So that's at least something that you can keep track of. We haven't really lost as much charge as I thought, so we should be fine for the next hour. Why don't we pick up a book? Uh, do we still have a book in our inventory? Yeah, we're already miserable anyway, and we're going to go to bed after this anyway, so just read. doesn't really matter. We'll read until we finish the uh, the autoclave. Very slow progress, of course. Our, our focus is going to tank. Um, we're not getting messages anymore. Is it done? Are you done? Yes. Okay. So let's... So the batteries should be full. So go ahead and turn off the engine. Check the batteries. Yep, they're full. We didn't deplete charge as quickly as I thought, uh, and let's now get items out of our autoclave. And you'll see it now has the sterile tag, and what that means is that this is ready for installation. This is just like when we found perfectly suitable CBMs in the lab that were ready to install immediately. So they're, they're now identical to that. So we'll go ahead and drop the cranial flashlight. 
And uh, yeah, now that we have come back to base and we have seen our CBM list, we could go back to the lab and install our torsion ratchet, metabolic interchange, and cranial flashlight. All three of those should be well within reasonable uh, realms of failure rates. So those three would be very installable. The flashlight should be extremely easy to install. Torsion ratchet and the metabolic interchange, because they're very basic, um, recharging CBMs, they should be pretty easy to install, I would guess. Probably the torsion, I mean, I, I guess I don't know what the difficulty is based on. Uh, you would think it would be based on the intricacy of the item. So for instance, the cranial flashlight is literally an LED that gets implanted in your forehead. Um, it is not complicated in the slightest, right? It's essentially just placing an LED in your forehead and wiring whatever internally so that it saps from your energy reservoir. So you would think that that would be a very simple operation, just threading some wires and stuff like that. Joint torsion ratchet, on the other hand, is specifically made to draw power or create power from your movement. So that presumably is something that extends to your limbs, uh, really all of your joints, and then wires into your body. So because it's joint surgery and stuff, you would think it'd be more complicated and more difficult. Metabolic interchange, on the other hand, is essentially sapping calories from your stomach to your power reservoir. So again, you would think this would be a relatively simple thing of putting whatever the the not, the node or whatever is that saps the energy and then wiring that into your power. It seems a little bit less intensive or invasive than installing lots of joints, uh, you know, these, these, these whatever ratchets and things onto your joints but i guess i don't know i don't know what determines the quality i mean i literally do it's the creator of the cbm basically assigns a difficulty so that's basically all that there is to it but like you know it's it's i don't know if there's a system in place that determines how difficult something is because for instance the implanted night vision cbm although this cbm is extremely valuable it just is an eye modification. There are other eye modifications in the game that are less difficult than the night vision. So it's like, why is this one, you know, one that we were struggling to install? Whatever. Anyway, so there we gave a basic tutorial of the autoclave. Again, I would like to apologize for the last few episodes. I hit a real deep batch of depression over the last week or so. I had a lot of little things that were just grinding me down. And I was playing these tutorial series and ranting about them essentially and then i would it would ruin my whole day because i was so focused on the negative negative. and then you know i started getting some small wins again and things started to turn around a little bit and then yesterday i kind of recognized that i was basically feeding my my own depression you know wallowing essentially and i was like nah let's not do that anymore and i redirected and i managed to pull out of it so I'm feeling a lot better, and hopefully that is reflected in the content. I know people always tell me, just don't record when you're miserable. But like, if you want to keep to a schedule, sometimes you don't have that option. So yeah, uh, so let's just pretend those never happened. I would erase them, but you know, it's like, it's already out there. Uh, so for now, that's a wrap for this episode. In the next episode, I think... I think we're just going to pack up our stuff and move. I don't think I want to spend more time here. This has been... The only real benefit of staying here, well, there are two. One is the food we planted, which is meaningless to me because it's so easy to get food. Uh, and a forge, which at this stage of the game, we're pushing towards making a vehicle forge anyway. So it's not like we need this forge. We've already forged our weapon. We've never found any of the high tier books. So it's like, even if I wanted to go melee, we just don't have the books to make the highest tier weapons in the game. So it's like... I don't need the forge, you know. So I think we'll figure out that in the next episode, which probably won't be a lot of fun, but it'll be something to do, I guess, and, and will get us back on the road and move us towards setting up a faction camp. So for now, save. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more tutorial content in the near future. I'll see you next time.